I would like to share with you about my own journey as um, a survivor of gender-based violence. So it's going to bring back memories, but I think I should tell the story now in, in this year so that once this year is over, it's gone with it. Hello and welcome to Lifestyle with Chinese Versatile. Today is day 11 of the Vlogmas and um, yesterday, day 10, I actually had to take it upon myself to remind us of what the human rights are. Yeah, the 30 articles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and um, it sort of like brought back some memories for me and I think it was more to the fact that the um, 16 days of activism against gender-based violence um, culminated yesterday the 10th of December which started from the 25th of November which was gender-based violence awareness day right so um, I think that was also one of the things that um, really impressed on me and um, I think I thought to come on here today and lend my voice yes I'm lending my voice because I think I have been a survivor I don't think I actually have been a survivor of gender-based violence now, um, I say survivor, I'm alive today to talk about it. Some people say, no, you're supposed to be like a victim, that's the word, but no, the difference, there's a difference because you were able to get saved from it, then you become a survivor. If you are not safe from it, you're more like a victim, okay? So, um, yeah, you become a victim and then a survivor, I guess. But what has brought me here today is because I want to share my story and I hope it um, resonates with someone. I hope it um, encourages someone, probably anyone who is going through um, gender-based violence right now in any form. And, um, you know, it, it, could be, it could be sexual, it could be verbal, it could be emotional. Even at your job, you know, you could experience gender-based violence, non-sexual, because we've got the non-sexual and sexual um, gender-based violence. And um, there's also something that kind of um, gets me off somehow, um, and that's the fact that we actually leave out the men when we talk of gender. And I wonder why. I think if we focus on both men and women, then I guess that we'll be able to reach all and probably will be like a step further in getting this message about gender-based violence across the moor. And also, if we could recognize that men also suffer gender-based violence. There are men in homes that suffer gender-based violence. So I just wanted to bring this to the fore in case it is unknown to you or to anybody out there. Men do suffer. I know some men who suffer gender-based violence, either sexual or non-sexual gender-based violence. So let us be concerned for everybody and not just the certain sex. Although, yeah, the women are like the most vulnerable. The children are like the most vulnerable we have in the society. Mostly if you are in societies where the men are held high than every other person in that community or that society so that being said I would like to share with you about my own journey as um, a survivor of gender-based violence so it's gonna bring back memories but I think I should tell this story now in in this year so that once this year is over it's gone with it as a victim of gender-based violence I suffered not only verbal abuse I suffered um, I don't think I suffered emotional. I didn't suffer emotional. I didn't suffer sexual, but I suffered verbal and physical. Yeah, I got beat up a couple of times. And funny thing, I'm alive to tell this story right now. Wow, you miss. Wow. Okay, so um, I got married. I've got a, like a story, but I think in time I'll be able to tell the rest of the story. But the major part, which is um, <clears throat> which is attached to what we're doing is the fact that I experienced firsthand being spoken to in a spiteful manner, in a manner that is very derogatory, in a manner that is that no human should um, should experience, you know. <clears throat> and annoyingly, thinking about it now though, to someone who had claimed to love you, someone whom you had married, someone whom you thought, oh, you could spend the rest of your life with, and um, it, 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 it's thinking about it right now. I'm trying so hard to control my emotions because I really would not want to cry on here. But when I think about it, it's like such a shame I stayed through that. I mean, I allowed myself to stay through that. But one thing happened, and that's what I would like to talk about. The fact that he graduated from a verbal 
abuse, like, you know, the words kept coming, kept coming, you know, making you feel less of yourself, making you feel unimportant, making you feel like you're not human, like the person is doing you a favor, to the physical aspects of hitting you, um, maiming you, making you, um, you know, giving you scars, bruises, and making you go through pain, you know? Not once, not twice. A few people who know me have heard the story. I have told them, people who know me personally, um, having been beat up, I mean, at your parents' place, and you still go on with their marriage? Yeah, that was my wrong. That was like, I, I, I fought myself till tomorrow. Even when I talk about it, I talk about it with a lot of... Um, I got some shame, although I know I say I've lost my shame some few years ago, but when you get to that point, like even at your parents, you get beat, even if it's a slap, hey, even if it's a slap, it's time for you to retract. But yours truly went ahead, not because she was love struck, no, but I went ahead because I didn't want to put my parents to shame. I didn't want my parents to feel oh the marriage is closed and you are having to um you know you want to quit the marriage because of an ordinary slap so i went ahead with it and that was how we graduated from a slap to a beating to a whooping and to the point of choking and then um the last well it wasn't really like the last but the second to the last was when i got beat up and i passed out i passed out i was actually revived, resuscitated with what had been poured on me and I found myself, you know, drenched in water and my daughter, my baby, my baby was about, um, I think, um, eight months, thereabouts, and she was seated right there, yeah, crying. And I'm like, okay, what is this, you know? I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. My baby was about 14 months at that time and, you know, I got screamed at, do you want to kill yourself? Do you want to leave your child behind? Look at your baby here. What is wrong with you? And of course, the storyline changed that I was fighting my husband. And I was being reminded, how can you fight your husband and you forget that he's a man? He can overpower you. But that wasn't what happened. That wasn't the case. But then again, now, thinking about it now, even if I fight my husband, should it be the reason why I should be beat up to the point of passing out? But then that's not the case. Thinking that that was going to be the last, yours truly still stay put. I cringe as I say it, I cringe because right now, the me right now, would not advise not even a person who's gotten married just yesterday to stay, okay? I did the wrong, I stayed in it, and that was because I felt like nothing. I had been brought down to like nothing and told that I do not even have, like I was being done a favor. Like the marriage to me was like a favor. Like look at me to allow myself to think that. I feel terrible right now thinking about it. But I am glad I'm lending my voice. I didn't get out of it. There was now a final one three months later. And this time around was like the last straw of it. I got beat up. I got turned over like upside down like this. And let me show you. So this is like my head, and then I got beat up, beat up, beat up, and then I got turned down. I was about to be hit this way. Thank God for my strength in um, acrobatics, kinda. I had to land on my um, my hand, and that was how God saved me. If not, it would have been my head on the floor, and who knows, that would have been the last. And that was where it was like it for me. I, I cried my head out. I was ready to die. I was ready to, pardon me to say this, I was ready to take my own life. And I cried my head out because I knew that I had signed my debt while getting into that marriage. And that was where it happened. Now, I didn't leave, but it was at that point I was grateful and I'm still very grateful that there was somebody, I had a sibling around who saw everything that happened. Now, prior to now, all of the, all of the um, things, all of the beatings I've actually experienced, I never told anybody, I never told not even my parents, none of my siblings knew about it. And that was why I was also scared that anybody would believe me and that's why I kept quiet about it. So my happiness is, till this day, is that there was someone who witnessed that. Although the person in question now claims that no, he's not a wife beater, I'm not holding him to it, but rather I thank him for making that move and doing what I couldn't do for myself by walking out of the marriage. Honestly, I am so grateful to God that um, I'm grateful. I'm thankful that he actually did make the move that I couldn't do. One thing is, um, one thing that comes to mind was, or yeah, was 
when I remembered when he told my pastor that it was a matter of life and death. And I'm like, okay, so if it's a matter of life and death, which means if you never left or if you didn't have to go, that either one of us was going to die. So I'm, I'm glad he got the, the memo. I'm glad he also took the, the step because um, thinking about it and talking about it right now, I am thankful. And I have also had that realization that in all honesty, if I um, hadn't left and if he hadn't left, probably I might have died. Probably he may have died in a sense that I know I'm a rather strong person, but you know, you never can tell where the other person's weaknesses are. You could just even hit them right here and then they snub and that's it. And then I get into trouble. So I'm grateful that he was very, you know, sensitive. He took the move, but, um, you know, being where I am today, I think I feel a lot better. I've healed over time. Like I'm happy to talk about it now with a lot of ease and um, freedom. Some two years ago was when I had the courage to um, come public to talk about it. I started sharing my experience with people. You can check, um, you can Google and you'll find it on there. I mean, during the GBV day in 2018, I spoke about it at an event organized by the US Embassy. So it's there on the news, but um, I'm having to talk about it now, but not talking about it. Oh, I was beat up and all of that, but more to the fact that value yourself, cherish yourself. In all honesty, I never did value myself. You know, in that period of marriage, I never did value myself. I let my guard down. I let myself down. I allowed myself to be trampled upon. I allowed my rights to be trampled upon in the name of marriage and just so that good things will be said about you. But even when you do that, people really don't say good things about you because I know for certain that a lot of bad things were said about me. You know, his family said things, you know, I really didn't care anymore. And like I said, I, I, I was more like a dead woman working. So I'm glad that it took that turn and I'm glad that everything that happened happened the way it's just that I wish it had happened on a better circumstance like he you know probably we had talked about it and I, I was giving the heads up before the takeoff I think that was also what really like weighed on me but right now in this current situation I am happy I am happier and um, my life still gets fulfilled so I'm encouraging someone out there if you're in a situation shit where you're being beat up and you're being afraid to speak up it's fine but it's not totally fine if you keep quiet about it and no one gets to know if my sibling hadn't known about it probably nobody would have and it was from her testimony I got courage to begin to talk about it you know she had there was someone who could back up my story you know so talk about it to somebody um, tell somebody what you're going through they might just help you with a clear head by giving you courage encouragement support or advice or even pushing you out because in all honesty sometimes we just need that push we just need that one person to push us out of the situation we allow ourselves into <sighs> yes yeah, so this is uh, me this is me lending my voice you deserve better I can see that clearly now that I'm on this side I deserve better I know I have got back my value for myself I my self-love has really boosted up if my children know it you know so and my children are happier because my daughter used to cry so much back then but now they are both happy and mommy is happier too so do yourself a favor love on yourself big time nobody can love you more than you would love yourself and after all the Bible says love your neighbor as you would love yourself so you have to have love for yourself first so this is it this is me lending my voice I know that the 16 days of activism has actually come to an end already but please let's not take the fact that oh it's over therefore hey life goes back to normal try as much as possible to reduce gender-based violence be it sexual or non-sexual um, you know word of mouth physical abuse and you know all the likes that come with it torture and in line with the um, 30 articles of the human rights try not to infringe on anybody's rights um, I think and life will be better, we'll have a better place and a better society to live in, you and I cohabiting together. But now it is love and light, I just can't wait to get out of this mood because I'm looking forward to the 12th day. It's a day that is packed up with a lot of activities for me. I think I need to go get my beauty sleep so that I look fresh, smart and happier for day 12. For now it's love and light, namaste, love you loads and see you on day 12. Peace.